What's up everyone? My name is Trey Baird and this is Gossip and Games. And today we're going to be discussing a certain blogger who has achieved notoriety numerous times. And this time he has achieved notoriety by visiting Disneyland 30 days in a row. Say what? So, I've always been a big fan of Steve Pavlina um, on the internet. He's, um, he's been one of my, my main inspirations for becoming a writer. I realized that, you know, writing could be so many different things to so many different people. And his, he had a certain writing style and a certain way of thinking that I'd never been exposed to before in my entire life. And that was really inspirational for me and seeing how um, influential and how successful he was forgot to jump. Seeing how successful and inspirational he was made me realize that if I put my mind to it, I could do that as well. So that was sort of what got me into blogging in the beginning. Now since then I, I I've been able to find, you know, um, other things to focus on, less so than his content, so I don't follow it as closely as I used to. Yeah, I love that. It's moments like that that really make this game stand out for me. Um, it, it's, it's hard to explain. Um, whoa, crap. Not sure what happened there. But the guy just has a really unique point of view. See, originally, I mean, he has a lot of backgrounds. He, he's done a lot of things with his life. But before he became a motivational speaker slash blogger, he was a video game programmer. And how many people do you know that are video programmers? And how many do you, of them do you know that stop programming video games so that they can become inspirational speakers. It's a very unique point of view. So it really, it puts a filter across all of the, um, cause face it, in the self-help industry, personal development industry, you come across a lot of the same material, the same content. It's the same thing told a thousand different ways. And sometimes not even a different way. Sometimes it's just flat out stolen. But I digress. With Steve Pavlina, his uh, background as a analytical thinker, left brain um, video game programmer. Man, I'm not doing very good. This is a hard game. You really do have to summon your ninja reflexes in this game. All right, hold that thought one second. Yep. Okay. So, as being a video game programmer, it it gives him a different filter of reality than others, and it's one that I find very interesting. One of the things um, from his era, you know, because he was programming video games in the 90s, um, and like shareware was a big thing back then. And if you're not familiar, or you're not old enough, or you just or you're not nerdy enough. You know, what Shareware is, is it's a video game um, or some other type of computer program. And um, as the name implies, you share it. You put it on a disc or you upload it to the internet for others to download. And the person gets to try that program or video game for a specified amount of time. Usually it was 30 days. Um, like Doom. Doom was a good example of that. People would get to play the first episode of Doom for free, and if they wanted to keep playing, they had to purchase it. Man, the wind is so unpredictable in this stage sometimes. Crap. Ah, the... Talking about the wind and I'm ignoring it. We'll get this eventually. Eventually we'll get it. Now I'm just being careless. So, you know, 30 days to try a program, well, when you look at the self-help industry through that filter, 
you think you know he came up with the idea of 30 days to try a new habit or a new lifestyle change with the idea being that 30 days one month is long enough to really get an idea of whether this habit is going to benefit your life or if it's going to be a hindrance or if it's going to be too much work or whatever but it's not so long as to seem intimidating so this is an idea that you know really resonated with me and I made it part of my lifestyle to adopt various 30-day challenges like we did a 30-day vegetarian uh, 30 days cold showers 30 days of gossip and games that was how I got the ball rolling on this show was a 30-day challenge to work on the show and I couldn't make that jump very well 30 days to to produce this show and to really you know get behind it and to hit the hit the ground running and you know I don't regret any of my 30-day challenges because they really are even if they don't even if they're not highly successful they still give you wisdom and I love that and um, it's with this mindset that he created the 30-day challenge for himself to go to Disneyland and um, I just find this very interesting because as I said he's a left brain analytical type of guy so this doesn't seem like the type of thing that he would want to do and he admits that and he, he talks about the weirdness and his initial aversion to doing it because of the weirdness and you know there, there are better ways to spend your time but the fact of the matter is he describes in his blog that the idea kept nagging at him and he had the you know come up with a qualifier is this something that I want to have the memory of doing and you know that that was finally what pushed him over the edge to do it was it seemed like something that would make a great story down the road or you know just great memories in general I you know the guy I don't want to give away his whole story but there's so much of it hold on man Okay, I feel better. Let's wait for the wind. Wait for the cream. Woohoo! Like I said, I'm not going to give away his whole thing, but he goes into such excruciating detail, um, which is his style about this experience on his blog that there's no way I could give away everything even if I tried I'd forget something so ah, I was looking at the ghost I was looking at the pink ghost instead of myself solution to that more beer so he went to Disneyland from October 25th to November 23rd uh, of 2016 you know getting back just in time for Thanksgiving and there were various other benefits to this um, timeline which if you if you what the heck oh my gosh okay there were other benefits to doing it at this time in this time frame but you know you can check out his blog to get those to read about those You know, and he made numerous interesting observations, which only he could do. You know, as I said, he has that that certain point of view. That, oh, man, tricky win. He has a certain point of view that helps you to um, really, you know, look at this differently than a normal person might might look at it. Well, one thing he mentioned was um, he didn't use these words, but he mentioned a Disney bubble. Now, I'm a big fan of Disney. Uh, the Disney parks. I, I've never been to Disneyland, but I've been to Disney World twice. So I understand where he's coming from when he talks about this because Disney, what they're doing is they're selling an, ex an escape from reality. They're um, selling you a prepackaged fantasy that you can partake in as long as you're a guest at a Disney park. Um, so I don't know if this is an insider term or if this is just a Disney fan term, but it's become known as the Disney bubble. And um, it's when you're on their property, you're shielded from the rest of the world. 
and you are totally at the mercy of their illusion. Now, you know, this is what sells the tickets for their repeat customers, for their diehard fans. This is what brings them back is the Disney bubble. And, you know, Steve would, you know, refer to just how they would preserve that fantasy and the lengths they would go to to, to not, for their guests to really become immersed in the Disney experience. You know, there, there's not much more to say about it that, you know, I, I want to say, because like I said, I really recommend that you check out and read it for yourself because it, it really is an interesting read and this is coming... Oh man, that sent me far. That was cheap. That sent me like 10 feet behind. Ah, okay. Yeah, I really recommend that you read it because for the reasons that I said that, you know, he just has a certain way with words and a certain way of looking at the world that you can't help but find very interesting. Yeah, at the end of the day, the, you know, his main issues with the experience that, you know, he's, he's glad to leave behind was the lack of vegetarian and vegan meals because he is a vegan. And um, just the, the stimu stimulation overload, the constant sounds, the noises, the being surrounded by people, you know, eventually that wears on you, but um, more so the, the music and the sounds than the people because he is kind of extroverted. The, the people would wear on me. I'm more introverted than that. So, yeah. I definitely recommend that you check it out. I'll post a link to the to the series, to the blog posts in down below and on my website, treybear.com, and you can go from there.